My dear friends, we will start this mass in, a, in about a minute. And today's mass is going to be offered in petition to our Blessed Mother for her help, for her prayers, that she may be with her children at this time of great peril, that she may shield and cover every one of you wherever you are at this time, that her presence may breathe that freshness that Elizabeth and John the Baptist and Zechariah experienced when she stopped by them. There is a lot of grief around our world today, in our country, in Europe, in Italy, in Spain, and in many parts of this world. There is, there is so much grief going around. And this may just be an iceberg of everything to expect. But we know that our good God can step in and calm the waves again. And so we're praying for his grace to help us weather these waves. So we pray for all those who are grieving at this time, all those who have loved, lost loved ones, that God may heal their pain and help them find meaning in their losses and in their grief. We pray for those who are sick right now, we pray and ask God's grace and God's healing for them. And I also don't want to forget everyone else who may be sick from other things. We still have cancers around us. We still have tumors. We still have all kinds of other diseases, heart conditions, diabetes, whatever. Now, these patients are still part of us. So we pray for them too. At this point, at this time, most of them have taken the back burner and some may die as a result because our focus is right now on this virus. Let us also pray for them too, that God may be with them as they struggle during this very difficult time. We pray for our doctors, our nurses, pray for surgeons, pray for uh, our lab technicians, pray for our researchers, pray for our first responders, pray for our police, our fire department, pray for everyone who is investing his time or her time in helping uh, fight this virus. We pray for our leaders. May God help them. May God provide clear guidance and inspiration at this time of great need. Our opening hymn will be a hymn dedicated to Our Lady. And we will sing this the hymn Hail Holy Queen enthroned above. Hail, holy queen and throne above, O Maria. Hail, mother of mercy and of love, O Maria. Triumph all ye cherubim, Sing with us, ye seraphim. Heaven on earth resound the hymn. Salve, 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 Regina. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, we are gathered here in this virtual space to honor our great God, to worship together our sons of our mighty God, but also ask our Blessed Mother to be with us. When we read the letter to the Hebrew, Scripture tells us, that whenever we gather and wherever we gather, we gather for all, for of all the children of God here and in heaven. The saints are gathered here with us and are worshiping here with us. And our prayers are that 
they would lead us on how to deal with perilous times of this kind because most of them went through them. And their prayers and their support and their guide will help us at this time to prepare ourselves for this mass. Let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, whose only begotten Son, as he hung upon the cross, chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, to be our mother also. Grant, we pray, that with her loving help, your church and your people may be more fruitful day by day, and exalting in the holiness of our children, may draw to her embrace all the families of the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations to which they have come and gather them on all sides to bring them back to their land. I'll make them one nation upon the land in the mountains of Israel and there shall be one prince for them all. Never again shall they be two nations. Never again shall they be divided into two kingdoms. No longer shall they defile themselves with their idols, their abominations, and all their transgressions. I will deliver them from all their sins of apostasy and cleanse them so that they may be my people and I may be their God. My servant David shall be prince over them, and there shall be one shepherd for them all. They shall live by my statutes and carefully observe my decrees. They shall live on the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, the land where their fathers lived. They shall live on it forever, and their children and their children's children with my servant David as their prince forever. I will make with them a covenant of peace. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will multiply them and put my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling shall be with them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Those the nations shall know that it is I, the Lord, who make Israel holy, that my sanctuary shall be set among them forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, the Lord will guide us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guide us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it to distant isles and say, He who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hands of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings. The grain, the wine, and the oil, and the sheep, and the oxen. 
the Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Then the virgins shall make merry and dance, and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Cast away from you all the crimes you have committed, says the Lord, and make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what Jesus had done began to believe in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priest and the Pharisees convened the Sanhedrin and said, What are we going to do? This man is performing many signs. If we leave him alone and all the people believe in him and the Romans will come and take away both our land and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing, nor do you consider that it is better for it is better for you that one man should die instead of the people, so that the whole nation may not perish. He did not say this on his own, but since he was high priest for that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation. Not only for the nation, but also to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to kill him. So Jesus no longer walked about in public among the Jews, but he left for the region near the desert to a town called Ephraim, and there he remained with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near. Many went up from, from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They looked for Jesus and said to one another, as they were in the temple area, What do you think? That he will not come to the feast? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, when, as believers, when we experience unprecedented events, events that are not commonplace, things that don't usually happen. They are not things we see in decades. Or in this case, in an entire generation, this is the first time something like this is happening. I'm sure to anyone who is living and alive today, where we are forced to stay in our homes, only except for those of us who cannot stay in our homes and just look at the walls and the screens and learn about almost everything in our houses that we took for granted all this while. But nothing like this has ever happened, at least in our generation. So at the moment of us unprecedented experiences, we want to go back and look at history. We want to go back and look, especially from the Word of God, to see parallels and to see how God himself ordained moments like this and how he wanted his people to function during those times. And so uh, this took me back um, to scripture. The two things I, I recognize. The first is from the first reading. The Bible said, no longer shall they defile themselves with idols, their abominations, and all their transgressions. I will deliver them from all their sins of apostasy and cleanse them, 
so that they may be my people and I will be their God. Now, this text caught my attention. I'm saying to myself, well, while I, as a believer, I believe my God is a loving God. He loves me more than anything else I could imagine. I am his delight and you are his delight. He would never cause me, intentionally cause me pain. But as a good father that he is, yes, to teach me a lesson or to let me learn something, he may allow me to experience pain just to get the lesson right, to know what is important. Now, last Friday, not, the fr not yesterday, but last Friday, the Pope led a global uh, worship moment. And during that period, the Pope said something that was very insightful said we are not this is not the time of god's judgment as many are too quick to prophesy and you know to to speak this is not the moment of god's judgment it's not the time of god's judgment this is a time of our own judgment that means it is god is giving us time to make judgment for ourselves of the things that are important the things that are valuable the things that are necessary and the things we have idolized not because they are so important or so necessary, but because we live in a media frenzy world and in a commercialized world where the, 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 the uh, profiteers or profiteurs are trying to sell stuff to us and we buy those stuff and idolizing those stuff. And sometimes to the detriment of the real things that are of value. Now, for me, I was thinking about what is it that I have idolized over the last period? What is it that takes so much of my time that God is now trying to take that away, to let me realize that, listen, you could have a more very functional life if only you can focus on the things that matter and not just spend your entire time on things that don't make any sense, they don't add value. It's only because you haven't thought or forced to look at them, to focus on them. And sometimes to the total denial of the things that matter. I, I was thinking about, see, I like to watch on my weekends. I normally would like to watch sports. I like watch soccer a lot. And at times I had to change some of my times, do a lot of things just to watch soccer. And I'm thinking about how I have not watched soccer in the last two weeks or three weeks. Life is going on. As I see, nothing is happening. And I'm thinking about how God is making me recognize that some of these things we value are really not that valuable. We have given them value in a sense. We have added and I we have idolized them. And God is saying, Okay, this time I'm giving you to make that judgment, to see clearly. What is important? And I guess that's why God has forced us to stay at home. First, to recognize the people that are most important to you are the people around you. The old saying says, charity starts at home. I'm thinking about children who sometimes um, find greater fun being with their friends, idolizing their relationships with friends, and never really caring about their siblings or about their parents or vice versa, parents not caring so much about their children, but more about work and how. And God is saying, okay, I want to prove to you right now what's important. I want to knock off that, those scales from your eyes, just so you can see, make a judgment for yourself, the things that are really important. And so as I read this text, the Bible says, no longer shall they defy themselves, you know, with idols. That means create these little idols everywhere for ourselves. God says, he is giving us this time just so we can reevaluate our own values. What is important to me? What have I made important over against everything, everything else, only because someone has forced that on me? And so mm -hmm. I want you to take your time and think about it. What is it that you have, have idolized over the last period of your own life? I, I'm taking time to think about myself and realize how those things, they're good. I'm not saying watching sports is not a bad thing. But have I made it so too important? Giving it too much time in my life? Maybe yes. How about you? You think about something that you have exaggerated in its importance. 
and see how best we can focus on the things that matter. God is letting us know that he is trying to like chisel off all of these little idols in us just to see the image he had created that we have almost destroyed in some other way because of everything else that we carry upon ourselves. So I hope that this moment God has given to us will also be such a great moment. And what a beautiful time for this to feed into the season of Lent where we're trying to, you know, clean off our death and making sure we look more like God created us to be, the image he himself likes to see and delights in. So that's what the first thing I want us to reflect on as we go through this period and as we learn from scripture how God spoke to moments like this. The second thing from the gospel reading. Now, I have heard any number of people. If you have somebody that you love, whose pastor is asking them to go to church at this time and to gather and to congregate at this time, please let them know. And I hate to say this, but I believe it's true. A pastor's heart should first think of his people. That's what I see in Jesus Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he said his heart was broken because they were like sheep without a shepherd. A pastor's heart should first think of his people, the health and safety of his people. When Jesus was about to be arrested, he said, what is it you're looking for? He said, Jesus of Nazareth. He says, if it's me you're looking for, take me, but let these others go. That's a pastor's heart who will sacrifice everything for the health and for the safety of his people. And it breaks my heart to see pastors who are asking their members to congregate at a time like this, a time of great peril. All because I guess they want some money. They want to make sure the offering keeps coming. That's sacrilege right there. If you know someone, anyone that you know, that you care about, whose pastor is asking them to congregate at this time, that is dangerous. That is idolatry. Because I doubt if this is about God. And I want us to go back to God. Go back to the Bible and see where God, for the safety of his people, asks them to stay at home. We are not the first generation to stay at home. Let us go back to the Bible. Go to the book of Genesis. Take the time and read Genesis chapter 6 and chapter 7. And see how God before, before the great calamity... God called a man called Noah. Says, build the ark. Noah was in the ark with his family for 40 days. 40 days and 40 nights. Never knew what was going out in the world. Why did God do that? Was to keep him, him and his family safe. So if anyone was first quarantined, if anyone was first given an order to stay at home, it was from the Almighty God. He gave that to Noah. Stay at home with your loved ones and with your families for your own safety. Are you telling me if God wanted Noah to be on to be out and about, he couldn't do it and still cause the rain? He could. But he told him, do this for your safety and for your children's safety. What are you telling me that at that period, God wasn't there or how? What 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 or God wasn't worshipped? I'm sure in that space, in the ark, Noah still worshipped and sacrificed to God. Now, you go and read Acts of the Apostles. Read Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. And see what happens. Towards, read towards the end of Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. You realize, you see how Jesus himself, they say the Bible said after he, after he had resurrected, he had dinner with the disciples. And at the end of the dinner, he said to them, you stay in Jerusalem. Do not leave Jerusalem until I send you the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus asked the disciples to quarantine themselves until, and they stayed, the Bible said, they went back and sat in, in the upper room until the Holy Spirit had descended on them. Now, when they were there, they were not there grieving and crying, he has caught all our rights. And, no, no, no. They were there and still walking and doing stuff. Don't forget, it was while they were quarantined that Matthias, the twelfth apostle to replace Judas was elected. So God asked his own disciples 
Quarantine yourself and wait for the Holy Spirit, the moment of liberation and freedom where you can go and be effective and productive and do the things you haven't created to do. So, so we are not the first generation to be quarantined or to be asked to stay in one place or to stay at home. While we are at home, we can still be effective and productive in all other ways. As I told you, the apostles, it was while they were in quarantine that Matthias, the 12th apostle to replace Judas, was elected. They were not just folding their hands and sleeping and praying and screaming. They were walking in the best way they could, given the circumstances. Now, how about Jesus in the gospel we just read? The Bible said, when the Jews had begun to plan to kill Jesus, Scripture says, Jesus no longer walked about in public among the Jews, but he left for the region near the desert to a town called Ephraim, and there he remained with his disciples. So even Jesus himself, the Lord, the Lord of our own lives, understood. He wasn't doing this for himself. He was modeling for us how to behave in perilous times, in dangerous times. You be reasonable and be responsible. He withdrew, the Bible said. He withdrew because his life was at risk. He, he didn't want to say, look, Jesus could... How many times did he... You know, either sneaked away, sneaked out, or they disappeared, or but he did not want to put himself. And it wasn't about him, it was about you, it was about me. How to behave in perilous times, in dangerous times. When our own lives are in danger, or in danger, we must behave reasonably. We must not put the Lord our God to the test. What these pastors are doing is putting God to the test. That is not faith. That isn't faith. That is testing God and tempting God. And God re rejects temptation. Remember what Jesus told the devil? says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And Jesus didn't do that. So, so I hope that you will speak and call around people you love. In states where governors are okay with people congregating for worship. God is okay at this time. If we can worship him in our families. Don't forget the Vatican Council too called families the domestic church that is a church right there where two or three gather in god's name that's a church right now at times like this we can worship from the comfort of our own homes and our own sitting rooms and pray to god and god hears us so i pray dear friends that we would pray for these pastors who are exploiting the ignorance or maybe the faith of their people and i hate to say this that is unholy that is sacrilege. That is unacceptable. Because a pastor's heart must first care about the safety of his people, not their money, not their wealth. It's the safety of his people. May God who has called us, who has loved us, give us grace to hear him, especially at dangerous times like this. So always I'd like to remind you that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most gracious God, hear our prayers. Listen to our concerns, especially at this time. You know where our hearts are. I want to pray for my patient, my first patient of coronavirus who died this week. I pray for how God and I pray for her parents. I pray that you may give her rest, and that you may give comfort and healing to her family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our doctors and nurses, especially those who are risking everything. Some have died as a result. That you may protect them, O oh God, as they care for our sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders. Pray especially for leaders who are making poor decisions at this time. That you, O oh God, may inspire them to see what is right and do it. And to lay aside political or economic considerations and just think about the health and well-being of their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering from all other ailments at this time and now feel abandoned or forgotten. That you, O oh God, may be with them and help them realize that you are taking care of those conditions for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your grieving people around the world, those whose life is changed, those whose hearts are broken. 
those who fear what might happen next. Dear God, may they feel your comfort and your healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have lost jobs at this time. Pray for children who are at home and may be bored and frustrated because they would prefer they were in school and doing stuff. That as today we celebrate the patron of children and educators, St. Isidore, that children everywhere, O oh God, may find your blessing and your comfort and your guide. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to also offer this Mass for mothers. Pray especially for mothers who are expecting at this time, pregnant mothers, that God may be with you, that God may watch over you, in the moment of delivery, that your child will be saved. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now ask our Blessed Mother to pray with us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Take, let us take a moment and allow you to also open your heart to God from wherever you are. Know that God hears us. These are his own words. Says, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. He hears us and he never abandons us. Pray for whatever it is that troubles you at this time. Maybe a petition or a thanksgiving or a request. Lord, receive all these prayers from your children. Hear the Christ in your hearts, O God. Mend those hearts, we beg you. And please minister to their every need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread to offer. Fruits of the earth and work of human hands become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice on our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who sees us surrounded by so many dangers and miseries, grant in your infinite goodness that the Blessed Virgin Mary mother of your divine son, may defend us from the evil spirits and protect us against all adver adversities, that always and with prompt succor she may deliver us from every evil soul and from every evil soul and body, and safely guide us to the kingdom of heaven through the merits of our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you do not cease to spoil us to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us. And through time and again, 
And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through your son Jesus, our Redeemer. With a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now, you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all. While they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming your joy, our joy at the salvation that comes from you. We join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy Broglie, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have died from this virus, O oh God. Remember those who are so sick. We ask, dear God, for rest to our dead and for healing. To our sick. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary Mother of God, the blessed Joseph her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray using the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. My dear friends, may the peace of God that knows no ending find you in your home, Find you wherever you are this time and be with you and refresh you in every good way. From me to you, peace and love. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us now pray and ask Jesus, to be with every one of his children around the world and to nourish them spiritually as they desire to receive his body and his blood. Lord God, ever merciful, ever present, most compassionate, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. As your children around the world desire to participate physically in your body and your blood, may you nourish them, O oh God. May you enrich them, O oh God. May you protect them, O oh God. And may you cover them with your blood. For we ask this to the same Christ, our Lord. Let us pray. O Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, who amid the tribulations of, of the world, watches over us and over the church of your Son, be to us and to the church truly our blessed Lady of prompt succor. Make haste to help us in all our necessities, that in this splitting life you may be our succor and obtain for, our, for us the petitions we have brought forward today. As you once saved our beloved city from ravaging flames and our country from an invading army, have pity on us and obtain for us protection from this coronavirus, O Blessed Lady, and from all other disasters. Be to us truly our Lady of Front Circle, now and especially at the hour of our death. We ask this through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord.
thanks be to God. Now, if you forgot everything I said today, remember that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much, and I do love you too. God bless you. We will sing the song, I Need You. We will sing the song, Oh Lord Jesus, I place my life in your hands. Oh Lord Jesus, I place my life in your hands. Oh, care for me. Lord Jesus, take control of my life and make it be as thou want. O oh Lord Jesus, you are my only hope. O oh Lord Jesus, you are my defender. Don't let me save no worship another God except you alone. Don't let me save no worship another God except you alone. O oh Lord, remember that I am for you. Don't let me break my last without you. Help me that all my days I may long to do your will alone. Help me that all my days I may long to do your will alone.